Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. We're here with New York Times published writer Jean Hanf Corliss. Jean, thanks for coming coming in for hey, us this morning. Thank you, Moses. Thanks for having me. So you're the author of a m number of things. You wrote the movie Admission as well as um, a number of other stories. I'm wondering if you could just take me through quickly how you got to that point, because I know we have a lot of writing majors who are trying to follow a similar path. Well, I hope they're patient. Uh, <laughs> I, my first two novels were rejected all over the world. And, you know, it, it, it's hard to write a novel. You have to be brave to write a novel, but you also have to be um, brave enough to put that novel away and write another novel, which I think is, is, uh, is, is a big stumbling block for a lot of people. I certainly felt that my, my first two novels were just awesome and they were great, and it was very devastating when they were rejected, but at some point you pull yourself to together and you say, I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it better. So that's, that's the tough part, um, but it's a, you know, if you can make it work, it's a wonderful career, and I've, I've been very grateful for it, not least because it allowed me to you know, dodge the whole work versus home <laughs> question when it came to raising my kids. So uh, that's been a real boon for me. That's true. And I think as artists, a lot of people here at Emerson feel that way of like, you kind of have to give up some of your best work sometimes to move on to some exactly. other work. Exactly. You have yeah, to kind of trim down. It's the whole uh, first uh, pancake in the pan uh, <laughs> scenario where you say, okay, what did I learn from this? And, uh, and you move on and you, you learn and you do it better. So t tell us a little bit about Admission. I would say it's one of your best-known works. It was uh, adapted into a movie starring Paul Rudd and Tina Fey. Tell us a yes. little bit about that experience. And the, the son of the adapter is actually an Emerson student. Nice. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, that's my primary uh, connection <laughs> to Emerson. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was very fortunate in the adapter. Uh, we became good friends, and and she, she, did, she had skills that I did not have. I mean, I could not have envisioned... Um, Admission, which is a rather serious, kind of thoughtful, <laughs> rather depressing, you might say, novel about a woman having a midlife crisis. Um, and she sort of turned it inside out and made it into something that was visually dramatic. And, and you know, I, I wrote about a woman sitting in a room reading college applications. That's not cinematic. She managed to, you know, reconceive that as something that was fun to watch. She also made it a comedy, you know, because she was adapting to the star, to Tina Fey. Um, it, it was uh, a difficult process, you know, it's very hard to let go of your baby, but, um, but I was happy with the result, and actually my, um, my, the novel that I wrote after Admission has just been um, purchased for adaptation on television, which I'm really excited about. Can't quite say who, but I'm pretty happy about it. So. Um, and, but, but right now I'm on the road with my newest novel, which is called The Devil and Webster, and it's, it's a return to the university setting which is fun to write about. Again, this very interesting story, interesting story premise. I was reading about it online. And so The Devil in Webster has a fictional college campus called Webster. And it has a very left-leaning student body. It sounds almost like Emerson, but I was wondering what kind of challenges you think come from having such a like-minded student body. I, I think it is a challenge because I think that, you know, uh, one way to look at going to college is that you're growing up, you're leaving home, you're separating from mom and dad. And, and I think student protest has always <laughs> been a part of that transition. You know, you, you get to a place where you're not being, you know, uh, there's no parental oversight anymore, and suddenly you have to kind of think for yourself. And I know this is true for me when I went to Dartmouth College in the 1980s. I come from a very liberal background. Everybody I knew agreed with me, and suddenly I found myself in an extremely conservative <laughs> environment, um, and, and I had to question the values that I'd grown up with. Did I actually believe, you know, in equal rights for women? Did I actually believe that, you know, people of all ethnicities were entitled to the same basic human rights? Yeah, I kind of did. And, you know, once you you reassert your own opinions, you have to respond to the people around you who, you know, who may disagree with you. But if they're not there to disagree with, you're kind of missing a whole necessary rite of passage in, in terms of your own ideological development. So it, it, it isn't a great thing to have everybody with the same opinion. You, you Emerson students, you need to go out and find some conservatives to talk to. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so would you say that your book, The Devil and Webster, was that more inspired by your college experience or the events happening across the country and college campuses now or a combination of both? It was a, it was a great quirk of timing. The day after I finished 
the manuscript, the Yale situation erupted. And I, I, I remember I, I had sent my book to my editor the day before, and I opened up the New York Times, and there was my novel on the front page. <laughs> and I just, part of me thought, yes, vindication, and part of me thought, oh, crap, <laughs> it's a year and a half until my book is going to come out, and everybody's going to say, Ripped from the headlines. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, student protest is not new. It's been going on for a long, long time. It's, as I said before, it's a rite of passage for students, for thoughtful students. And, you know, it, 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 I suppose it shouldn't surprise me that from a year and a half ago when the Yale protests happened and the University of Missouri protests happened and probably something at Emerson happened, um, you know, we're, we're right in it. Uh, these days we have plenty more things to protest about. But it, it is eternally with us. But the inspiration for this story, ironically, was, um, was, was something that I heard about a few years ago. It had happened in the 90s, but somehow I missed it. Um, it was an incident that happened at another New England college, which I will not name. <laughs> um, and my writer antennae just kind of perked up, and I thought, this is something I'm going to write about. I didn't want to know the real details. I avoided finding out the details. I couldn't tell you the names of the people involved. Um, but it had everything that I loved to write about. It had liars. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I love to write about liars <laughs> and sociopaths and in an academic setting. And these are all things that just combine to, to make me say, yeah, this is my next book. So that was the, <laughs> that was the inspiration. That was three years ago. Wow. So yeah. just to wrap up really quick, what would be your like too long, didn't read uh, version of advice for inspiring um, writers here at Emerson? I, I think college is an incredibly important time to read and think. Uh, we are we're lucky as novelists because we get better. It's not like we're ballet dancers where if we haven't made it by the time we're 18, it's over. We get to get better. And this is time to absolutely to write. But even more, I think it's, I think it's an important time to read. I think you should be reading widely. I think you should be talking about ideas with people. I think you should be learning about the world. And don't worry if you haven't made it as a novelist by the time you're 21 years old, because I cannot think of a single great novel written by a very young writer. Um, we, we get to improve. We get to, you know, learn from our mistakes. So by all means, write a novel now if you want, but don't, don't place too great a burden on it in terms of commercial success, because, um, because you'll get better. If, if you're tough enough and brave enough um, to keep going and to you know, roll with the setbacks. The only other thing I would say is, unless you're writing genre fiction, do not self-publish because, um, you know, if you're writing romance or if you're writing sci-fi, yes, that's, that seems to be working out okay for self-publication. But if you ever want to be taken, you know, seriously as a literary writer, self-publication is not your friend. So don't do it. <laughs> I love the practical death. and the artistic advice. Yeah, and lots of stuff could really apply to any <laughs> career path, just kind of staying yeah. consistent with it, staying patient. Thank yeah. you so much for and coming thank you, and yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so interesting. Yeah. I can't wait to check out the book. I yeah, know I have really to I'm really excited for it. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a great okay. rest of your day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Claire Gomes. And I'm Moses Small. And we're your hosts from Good Morning Emerson. We hope you liked what you saw. If you'd like to watch another clip from this episode, click the link on the left. And if you want to watch another video from this season of GME, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching. And remember to watch us Wednesday mornings on the Emerson Channel.